Hello, and welcome to the preview of new features coming to Blackboard in 2017. Here at NIU, we'll be upgrading to the Q4 2016 release. So those are the features we'll be talking about today. I'm Stephanie Richter. I'm the Assistant Director of the Faculty Development and Instructional Design Center at Northern Illinois University. And I'm happy to be here to share some of the exciting new things that are coming with you. But first, let's talk a little bit about Blackboard at NIU, how it's currently used and how it's grown. So this last fall, 88% of NIU faculty, instructors, and teaching assistants use Blackboard with at least one of their courses. And 95% of students, therefore, had at least one course in Blackboard. We've seen that pretty steady over time now. Um, if you go all the way back to when we started with Blackboard, we've obviously seen a huge increase. But we've been averaging around 90% of faculty and about 95 or 96% of students for quite some time. So it's a fairly stable usage. Overall, that's about 64% of all credit courses that are offered here at NIU are available in Blackboard, are used in Blackboard, I should say. And that's about four, it's a little over four on average courses per student each semester. Blackboard's a, a really critical sy system for us. And so I'm glad that all of you feel is the same in order to uh, further your teaching, that you're here to learn about some new things that are coming. If you're curious, by the way, the, the most frequently used tools in Blackboard are the announcements feature and uh, being able to post content. So using an item or a, a folder or a file in order to put content out there for students are by far the two most, most used methods or tools in Blackboard. So as I said, we are upgrading, we're currently on what's called the October 2014 release, and we're moving to the, the Q4 for fourth quarter, Q4 2016 release. This is actually a fairly new release of Blackboard, although there is one that's newer. It just came out a few weeks ago. We haven't had a chance to test it, so we're going to stick with the slightly older but still very current version that we've been able to test and make sure is stable on all of our, our servers and our systems. The anticipated window for this, by the way, is Memorial Day weekend, May 27th through the 29th. Uh, we, there will be a, um, an upgrade window in which Blackboard will be unavailable briefly uh, from probably Saturday morning until Saturday evening. But we do let you know about the, the weekend in case you have a course running at the same time or would plan to be uh, building your summer course during that window so that you know it will be unavailable. For more information on this upgrade or any year on a Blackboard upgrade, you can go to niu.edu slash Blackboard slash upgrade. And I'll put that in the text chat so that uh, you can click it from there in order to go straight to the website. If you'd like to see more about the features we're going to talk about today or uh, potential workshops you may want to attend, those sorts of things will all be available at uh, that URL. If you want to flash back quickly to last year, there were really only three features new last year that we discussed. Um, the big one was Collaborate Ultra. So while it was available in um, from the fall of 2015 on, actually, it was so we were doing it at that point in a pilot mode. So as of uh, summer 2016, Collaborate Ultra was available standard for all courses at NIU. In fact, after this semester, we'll be turning off the classic Collaborate version entirely so that up until now, you've had a choice of which you wanted to use and support for it. The classic version of Collaborate, unfortunately, will be ending soon. So we're trying to move everyone over to Collaborate Ultra, which is a much lighter, more modern version of web conferencing that runs directly in the web browser and uh, relies on a lot of the modern features, or has a lot of the modern features we've come to rely on from other types of, of web conferencing or chat platforms. One of the other features that was fairly big that uh, I personally have spent a year discussing with a lot of groups across campus is the goal performance dashboard. 
the this was a new tool that we enabled last year that ties into the goals and alignments feature in Blackboard. So goals and alignments allows you to set up custom standards or learning outcomes for your students and then align those to the assessments in your course, whether that's a, an assignment, a test, a graded discussion board, any place that you use a rubric, for example. Uh, and then the goal performance dashboard allows us to extract that data in an aggregate form across courses. So if you wanted to see, for example, how students were performing on one of your learning outcomes, you can align that at, to the assessments in the courses and then pull out an aggregate result to see on average across all of the courses they're taking how students are performing on that outcome. It's a really useful tool if you are working with a secondary accreditation or professional accreditation where you need to be able to report those um, learning outcomes to your accrediting body. But it's also a really useful tool for your own program assessment so that you as a faculty can understand how students are performing and maybe where you need to um, revise or, or um, make changes to your curriculum in order to better support students on achieving those outcomes. If you're interested in learning more about the goal performance dashboard or the goals and alignments feature, just please reach out to me. I'd be happy to let you know more about it. We also had a workshop um, earlier this year or last year called Tracking Student Learning Outcomes in Blackboard. You can find that recording on our website, or I can find the, the link here quickly. It would, uh, goes through how that system works in more detail, so that if you'd like to learn more, you can find out from there. And then the last feature, which was a really small feature, but at the same time, fairly significant for all of us, is that the... Um, spell check <laughs> was now going to default to on, whereas in the past spell check was off and you had to remember to turn it on. With the, the last upgrade, the spell check was going to be on by default so that student work was actively tracked as they were typing it so that they would know if there were any spelling errors that they needed to correct. So small, small upgrade last time with uh, one major feature in Collaborate Ultra a fairly large feature, and then a tiny little feature that still has a significant impact. This year, we have a couple of more features that are available now. Uh, many of them you may not notice, a couple of them you will definitely notice. So we want to share as much information as we can about those. Uh, I'm going to start with a few recent features, things which are actually available now, but which we haven't announced uh, very broadly, so you may not be aware of them. Um, this is our chance to start talking about those and get a little more word out, and we'll talk about them throughout the this um, upgrade season. And then there are a number of new features we'll look at as well. The first one that I, we, is currently available is an improved course request process. So here at NIU, you have to request a new Blackboard course each semester that you want to teach. When you make that request, Blackboard then connects with MyNIU, our student information system, in order to determine which courses you're teaching, which courses, uh, and which students are enrolled for that course. That way, student enrollments are automatically brought into your course, and no one has to manually add students anywhere. Going forward now, there are a number of improvements to this process. It's a custom written tool actually by our system administrator in the division of IT. So he was able to implement a lot of changes that I think will be make it a much more useful process than it already was. The first one is that course requests occur immediately. In the past, there were uh, two server runs a day, one at about 9 a.m. and one at about 3 p.m. And when those server runs would occur, that's when your course lists would update. So if you submitted a course request at noon, by the afternoon, after the afternoon run, your course would be available. So it, we said that it was a 24-hour process, but it usually occurred in under 12. Um, now, there's no delay whatsoever. As soon as you submit the request, the process will run in order to generate the course and to um, pull in student enrollments. 
also new, you'll get an email notification as soon as the course is created. So it's just an added confirmation to you that your course has been created and is now available for you to use in Blackboard. That email notification will also include a few brief reminders for things that you, uh, key tasks that you may need to uh, accomplish in your new course. Another great new feature that's part of this process now is an auto availability option. In Blackboard, when you request your course, it comes in as unavailable, in an unavailable state. That means that it's in a development mode where you can build your course out, but it's unavailable to students and they can't see it yet. Going forward now, when you request your course, you can also specify that you'd like it to automatically be made available on a certain date. Blackboard uh, uh, will, by default, also know the start date for your course, so it will be pre-populated if you choose auto availability with the start date for your course. You can turn auto availability off entirely, so then you will manually make your course available as you always have, or you can set a different date. So if you do want your course to become available, but you want it available a week before the semester begins, you can determine that ahead of time, and then you don't have to worry about it. Your course will just automatically open to students. Um, and one of the most exciting new features, actually, in my opinion, is for course master courses. If you have two or more sections of the same course, or if you have courses which are cross-listed for some reason, uh, maybe there's an honors section, or there's an undergraduate and graduate level um, cross-list, or maybe it's cross-listed across departments, where it's really one course. You're only going to teach it as one class. Everyone will be together. Uh, so you'd rather manage one Blackboard course instead of several, right? If you have two students over here in an honor section, but 30 in your main section, you don't want to upload files in both places or go to both to post announcements. You just want one master course. Well, now when you request a master course, Blackboard will automatically create groups within your master course for each of the sections you've combined. What that will do is uh, give you a space where you can then work with one section alone in a little bit more uh, simplified manner. So for example, having a group also means you can have a smart view and a smart view will be created for you automatically as well for the grade center. With a smart view then, when you go to the grade center, you can see only those students from section one or only the honors students or only the graduate students, depending on, uh, your grading task at that moment. That way you don't have to see the full list of students, you can focus just on yours. If you have a lab course or you have a course where you have multiple TAs who are grading and each TA takes a section, that TA can go in and only see the students in their section then so that they can more easily know who to grade and who to skip. That also, however, gives you options such as emailing a single section really easily through Blackboard using the group email feature. Or if you have assignments or assessments that are only for maybe your honor section or only for the graduate level students, you can use adaptive release using the group membership in order to limit that visibility so that only the students who need to complete that assignment will actually see it. Those are just a few examples. There are far more ways that these automatic groups will um, be to your advantage when you're teaching a course that's combined like this. The, the groups will be created automatically, as I said, and the membership will be updated as students add or drop or shift sections. And then you can, of course, create your own groups on top of that if you have collaborative work or collaborative assignments that you want students to engage with in your courses. This is live now. It went live um, actually at the beginning of the earlier in the semester. So as you request your courses for summer or fall, which both of which should be available for you to do at this point, actually. Uh, you'll see this new process. You'll be able to opt in or out from the auto availability option. And uh, if you combine your courses, you'll have those groups automatically created. Another feature that's been around for a while is the BB Student mobile app. So this app replaces the Blackboard Mobile Learn app, which we've had for, um, I believe, four or five years now. 
And the BB Student has been out for a while, but we haven't, um, we've been slow to roll it out because it's been developing functionality as it's uh, grown. So at this point, it has very strong functionality, and we thought it was a good time to uh, start announcing it. So BB Student is for students only. It is available for Apple, Android, and Windows devices that help students to connect to their courses while they're on the go and to be, um, it, design, it redesigns the Blackboard course a little bit so that it is more streamlined and easier to access and navigate from a mobile device. So for example, it includes an activity stream which will aggregate key information like upcoming due dates or new content from all of the courses the student is taking. There's a course outline view of the course then, which is similar to your course menu, but is a little simplified and restructured. So the content will be in the same places, but it makes it a little easier for students to navigate on the, the mobile device. And then one of the key areas that um, the mobile app has is the ability for students to interact with one another through discussions and through Collaborate Ultra. If you use Collaborate Ultra for synchronous sessions in your course, students can join those sessions and participate quite fully from the mobile device, including using their, their microphone, for example, for audio. Uh, another other key features, BB Student does have an integration with Dropbox and OneDrive so that Students can submit their assignments or their work from those cloud providers. Um, on an Android device, you could also dig into, or Windows, I would imagine, too, dig into the file structure to attach a file. On an Apple device, of course, you're limited to the camera roll. So if you have students completing an assignment where they take a photo, then they could attach it to an assignment and submit it from their phones. Otherwise, they would need to use um, a cloud service for their files. But while BB Student doesn't replace the full classroom experience from Blackboard itself. It does make it easier for students to navigate Blackboard and to use it from their mobile devices. I'm going to also here mention as a preview that BB Instructor, which is a mobile app designed specifically for the workflows that faculty use when they're teaching a course, will be available sometime later this year. In the meantime, faculty can continue to use Blackboard Mobile Learn and until BB Instructor becomes available. Yes, Lori, I'm glad that you're impressed with it. My one criticism, if I have it, of BB Student is actually the name. When students go looking to see if there's a mobile app for Blackboard, they look up Blackboard. They don't go look up BB. And so if you search for Blackboard, it's difficult to find BB students. So I think some of our students are aware. Many of them are not. And we'll be doing a little more to try to campaign about BB student and get some word out for, for students starting this fall. So new features, things that are entirely brand new coming to Blackboard. The first one is an entirely new look and feel. So we're implementing with the, this upgrade what's called the Blackboard Mobile Theme. It's a 2016 brand new designed mobile theme that is more responsive and better suited for the variety of devices that we use to access Blackboard and to interact with our courses. So this mobile responsive theme will resize it's on the screen size. So if you're working from uh, your desktop computer or laptop, you'll have the full view of the screen. Whereas if you log in directly to Blackboard from your browser on a tablet, it will collapse a few things so that you have a more streamlined view with fewer menus. Um, you can still access those, but it focuses primarily then on the content and resizes the rest of the materials. And the same thing goes for the phone. If you're on the very narrow device, again, it resizes how the, the screen looks and how the navigation works so that it's optimized for the device that you are on. It will also then add the submit button at the bottom of the window on every screen. So right now, of course, you're used to the red submit buttons that are at the top and the bottom of every page you're editing. And if you need to get to one of those, you have to scroll back up to the top or back or all the way down to the bottom. Going forward, the submit button will actually float at the bottom of the screen. So as you scroll, new content will appear, but the submit button will always be there at the bottom 
So if you're done with a page, you don't need to scroll all the way to the end before you submit. Uh, you can enter what you need to, attach your file, for example, and then click Submit instead of making it all the way to the bottom. One of the other great new features here is a new icon set. This is not a very good photo of them, I'm afraid. Uh, it's been resized <laughs> in order to fit um, here and collaborate. So some of, some of the, the line art is not coming through well. But these icons then replace the current icons that are floating to the left when you post a, an assignment or an item or um, a, a web link. Things like that now have cleaner, more modern icons throughout Blackboard. The ones that were there were significantly old and getting a little dated. So no new functionality with icons, just newer, more modern icons to see. Now, there are a couple of things that you'll notice as well with the new theme that um, we want to be clear about. One of them is because the screen resizes, when you first log into Blackboard, the, that NIU landing page, uh, the three columns of modules will actually reflow underneath one another on a smaller screen. So instead of seeing three columns, you would have one column that was just really long with all of those boxes on it. Uh, if you're on a mobile device then, my courses from the far right column would have ended up pretty far down in your list, and you'd have to scroll quite a bit in order to get to it. So one of the changes that we're implementing for all users is moving my courses to the first left position. That way, when you log in on a smaller device, that will be the first module that you see at the very top, and you can easily get to your courses. So we moved the items that were on the left then, like the tools and support links to the right, and just kind of flip-flopped everything so that um, the items that you perhaps need less often will be moved and will be at the bottom when you're trying to access them on a phone. Um, you can still rearrange the module page. So when you log in, if you do want those in a different order, you can do so. But uh, my courses, will, instead of being at the right, it will now be at the left. So it's the very first thing you see. The other two items here are, um, unfortunately, features that we're going to lose for now. In the new course, the new theme, course menu colors cannot be changed any longer. So all courses will have the same colored menu. For It's for consistency across the platform and for consistency between the uh, desktop, the regular uh, Windows browser version versus the mobile app version. So course menu cannot be changed, the colors, and there's no longer an option to have buttons instead of links. I think in the long run, this will create a, as I said, a more consistent um, look and feel to Blackboard courses. At the same time, if you do still want to implement things to make it look and feel a little different for your course, you can still add a course banner to the top of your course entry page so that you can brand your course a little bit and give it a, a more custom feel since you can't change the, the menu color. So Kimberly, the menu itself can be changed. Uh, if I go back here, you can, you'll be able to change the actual content of the links. So what sections are on your menu, that you can change. What you won't be able to change is the color. Yep, yep. It's important for me to clarify that. I apologize for if I was misleading. The, the second new feature I want to talk about is for a tool that we haven't discussed in a long time. And that's self and peer assessments. So self and peer assessments was first added to Blackboard in um, around 2010 or 11, actually. And it's a fairly complex feature that lets students submit work of their own. And then Blackboard will randomly assign them into pairs to evaluate one another. And then in the third step, students actually evaluate themselves and their peers. So it's, it's a fabulous tool for using peer assessment and having those peer evaluations. But it's, it was severely limited in how it worked. Um, now there are some enhancements that will make self and peer assessments work in ways that are a little more flexible and hopefully make it a little more useful for a lot of our classrooms. So pre previously, 
uh, sorry, it's a complex tool. Let me explain this carefully. So this first diagram shows all of the students in the course. The blue students submitted their work. The gray students did not submit their work to a self and peer assessment. So the way that this worked in the past was then Blackboard still randomly assigned everyone to each other. That caused some problems because the student who didn't submit work now is being evaluated. So this blue student had to evaluate essentially an empty submission. It was difficult for students to see that and to understand what was going on because there was there, they had to complete the evaluation, but there was nothing to complete. And it was just a little odd and glitchy. So these red lines represent those, those empty submissions and those evaluations that still needed to occur. The gray lines here represent evaluations that this student was still required to do. So if you had two students who didn't participate by submitting work, they still had to do evaluations for the students who had. And unfortunately, quite often, those students who didn't submit also didn't evaluate. And now you have students who would have fewer evaluations than what they were supposed to. In the case of this one right here, both of their evaluations were meant to come from students who didn't submit work, which meant that they may not have received any feedback on their work. Going forward, the improvement is that students who don't submit initially are excluded from evaluation. So we have a situation more like this one to the right, where the students who didn't submit are dropped from the evaluation phase. So when students are assigned to one another, they're only assigned based on the work that was actually submitted. While this is great for whole class uh, peer assessments where students can now more reliably assess one another for uh, maybe a, a draft of an assignment, for example, it also becomes really handy for group evaluations. As soon as I would say peer assessment in the past, that's what everyone wanted. Well, how can I have groups evaluate each other on how well they worked as a group? Well, now with self and peer assessment, you can set up a separate self and peer assessment for each group and then use adaptive release to limit that to one group. This way, when only those group members actually submit to the self and peer assessment, they'll only be assigned to evaluate each other. And you can use this then for intergroup, uh, intergroup peer evaluations on their, their, how they've worked together or their progress working together. Um, with self and peer assessments, of course, as a refresher, you can have students actually grade one with numerical scores and provide qualitative feedback to each other. Those scores then can just be for you to review or you can also send those to the grade center where they can become part of the student's grade. If you have any questions on this, uh, feel free to ask them or reach out um, independently and we can go through the tool one-on-one. -on -one. Because like I said, it's a little, a little complex to get started with, um, but once it's in place, it should work so much smoother now than it has in the past. Uh, what's a minor feature in terms of how it transforms Blackboard, but a great feature in f terms of how easy it is to use, Blackboard now will have a drag and drop file upload option. For now, it's going to work on items, assignments, and I believe blogs and journals, but there are more, um, more features for it to come in the future as well. Essentially, when you're creating an item and adding content, instead of clicking the Browse My Computer button, now there'll be a highlighted drag and drop area where you can drag a file from your computer and it will upload and attach it without uh, automatically. So it's a little bit easier. You do still need to create the item. You can't just drag and drop into Blackboard itself. But once you've started the item and given it a name, then you can use drag and drop in order to add the attachment. In some browsers, this will actually even work with a folder with multiple files. We're still testing to make sure that we understand uh, which browsers and under what circumstances. But if it ever doesn't work, then you can still drag the files over uh, individually. If you don't have um, the drag and drop capability or if you don't have your um, file browser open, you can still click Browse My Computer or Browse Content Collection in order to find those files the traditional way. But with the drag and drop, hopefully it'll be just a little bit easier to do that. 
students will have this ability for submitting assignments as well. Speaking of assignments, there are a few other enhancements to talk about. The first one is that students will receive now a confirmation receipt code when they submit an assignment. So this code, and it's a fairly long number, it's automatically generated by the system, you can see it here. They can copy that code and keep it for their own records as confirmation that they had actually submitted the assignment, in addition to the confirmation they've had in the past, which is reviewing the submission history to see that it was in place. You, as the instructor, faculty member, can access these confirmation codes as well via the Grade Center. You'll be able to go in and see the confirmation codes for all of your students to make sure that, if, in case there's ever a dispute as to whether or not an assignment was successfully submitted. Um, in the future, not this year, but in um, another year, another upgrade cycle, this assignment receipt will actually be sent via email to students as well. So in addition to seeing it in the browser, in the future, students will receive an email for, for that. But for now, they'll at least be able to see that number as soon as they've submitted their assignment. The second enhancement that will be added is e uh, email reminders. So this will be an option in the Grade Center. If you go to the column for uh, any given assignment and click the drop down arrow, you'll have the option to send a reminder. This is a, a fairly basic system generated message. It's not something you can customize, but it will send a reminder email to every student who has not yet sent in their work. So here we can see a number of students have submitted their work. That's the exclamation marks. And in this window, two of them haven't. There are more students in the Grade Center than what's visible here. And so this will only send to the students who have not yet submitted. That reminder will include things like the assignment name, the, um, the due date, and a few other details to remind them that they need to submit this work. As I said, it will be automatically generated for you. And when you click Send Reminder, Blackboard will prompt you with how many students would be receiving that reminder. It'll be a quick and easy way, I hope, to help students keep up if they, they're a, a day or two before the deadline and have not yet submitted anything. The last enhancement is actually to the needs grading um, side of assignments. If you've enabled multiple attempts on an assignment in the past, you'll notice when you do that, that now needs grading gets full with all of those multiple attempts. So if a student has submitted three times, you have three attempts to grade. And there's not an easy way to get rid of those except for actually grading the student. And there's no point in putting in the time grading the, the multiple submissions if you're only going to count the final or the, the, the final one as their grade. It would be great if you could filter out and only see the ones you needed to grade. Fortunately, going forward, that will happen. So there will be a new checkbox on the needs grading. By default, Blackboard will exclude multiple attempts from the needs grading view. It will only show you the, grade, the, the attempt that you've said you'll grade. So for example, your options for that are first attempt, last attempt, or there is an option to average all of the attempts. If you've chosen to base the grade on either the first attempt or the last attempt, that's the only thing that Blackboard will show you. So you can then still enable to see the attempts that won't contribute to the user's grade by clicking the checkbox under the filters in Needs Grading. And this diagram here shows that initially there were 60, but once that checkbox was selected, then there were 68. So there were eight submissions that were considered multiple submissions. Um, Again, a small change, but one that will improve your grading workflow and make it easier for you to determine where you actually need to spend your time on grading. And then a few bonus um, items, ones that weren't quite big enough to make them to a, um, a full page on their own, but 
that were um, interesting to make sure you're aware of regardless. One is Dropbox integration. So there will now be a, a Dropbox integration as a mashup on the um, Textbox editor so that you can connect your Dropbox account, if you have one, to Blackboard. And then you can add files directly from your Dropbox account into your Blackboard course. You could, of course, also, if you have them synced on your computer, drag and drop them into the files, the attachment area, in order to upload them like you would any file. But this will let you attach files that maybe aren't synced to your computer, but which you do have sitting in Dropbox. The second one that's a small change, but one that I'm excited for, is being able to export rubrics. So when you've built a rubric in Blackboard and you navigate to the rubrics page, there's an option to export and then import a rubric. If you try to export it, you get an error that um, the process can't run. And that error has been there for quite some time, unfortunately. With this upgrade, Blackboard has finally fixed that so that you will be able to export the rubric from one course and import it to another. In the meantime, what we've recommended is using course copy, and you can still course copy your rubrics, particularly if you want to take all of your rubrics from one course and move them to another. However, now you'll be able to export them individually. So if you build the rubric in section one and you just want to export that one and import it to section two, you will finally be able to do so. And then the, the final thing that I wanted to talk to you about is thread-to-thread -thread navigation on discussion boards. If you have, um, when you have a, a forum created and students are creating threads as their means of answering, the only way now to go from one student to another is to go back to the main forum page where you can pick from all of the threads. Well now, going forward, there'll be this small thread indicator in the upper right corner of the discussion board that will let you go from one thread to the next. So here I have two. I can click the arrow to go from one to the next. If I had more than that, if I had 10, I could click the double arrow to go to the last one doesn't let you easily jump from one thread to a specific thread, but it will let you, if you just want to kind of page through those a little more naturally, get through them a little quicker one after the other. So that's it. Here are the exciting new features that are already available and several that are still coming. Um, other than the new look and feel, nothing that fundamentally changes all of Blackboard, but a lot of things that will make using individual features more reliable or certainly easier and quicker. As a reminder, if you want more information, you can go to niu.edu slash blackboard slash upgrade to learn more. We'll have uh, as much information as we can put out there about when the upgrade will occur, for example, other workshops that will be coming up where you can try some of these out. Once Blackboard is upgraded um, that last weekend in May, you'll be able to log into your, your courses. Everything will still be there. Um, nothing will change in that regard in order to see these changes in action. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'm Stephanie Richter, and you can find me in the Faculty Development and Instructional Design Center. Thank you all so much.